हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी काइंडली सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ़ यू हैवेंट सब्सक्राइब इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम चैप्टर थर्टीन हिमलर डायनामिक्स द प्रॉब्लम सेज दैट द स्प्रिंग हेल्ड फॉलोअर ए बी हैज़ अ मास ऑफ पॉइंट फाइव के जी एंड मूव बैक एंड फोर्थ एज इट्स एंड रोल्स ऑन द कंट्रोल सर्फिस ऑफ द केम वेयर आर इक्वल्स टू पॉइंट वन फाइव मीटर्स एंड जेड इक्वल्स टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू काज ऑफ थीटा so the moment of the follower is described by this function along the z axis if the cam is rotating at a constant rate of 30 radian per second determine the maximum and minimum force components of z the follower exerts on the cam if the spring is uncompressed when theta equals to 90 degree so we have to find the maximum force of the follower and the minimum uh, the maximum force of the cam and the minimum force of the cam on this follower at point a so for that first we have to find the general equation so then we will be able to find or define the condition for maximum and minimum of that uh, cam force on the follower so first of all i need to find the spring force so the spring force is we know that it is always equal to the the stiffness times the change in length of the spring and as we know that the change in length is always equal to the unstretched length let's say that the unstretched length uh, the stretched length the change in length is always defined by the change the stretched length minus the unstretched length so let's say that the unstretched length is x not and the stretched length is xs so the the motion of the follower is defined by z as a function of theta so in the problem statement it is said that uh, the the spring is uncompressed when theta equals to 90 degree so this means that the x not that the unstretched length will be equal to 0.02 cos of 2 theta since the stretchedness or the unstretchedness of the spring is defined by that uh, z as a function of theta so when when theta equals to 90 degree the spring is unstretched so now if i put uh that uh, theta equals to 90 degree in this equation so cos of 2 into 90 so that will be equal to uh 180 and cos of 180 is minus so x not equals to z minus 0.02 meters and similarly uh, the stretch length will be equal to at any instant the stretch length will be defined by that z and that is equal to 0.02 cos of theta so at any arbitrary theta of this cam the the stretch length of the spring will be defined by this z so what does this mean if if let's say if if i draw that follower let's say if this is the free body diagram of that follower and if let's say that this at this particular instant this is my z equals to 0 and z is positive in this direction this is my positive z direction and this is my negative z direction so at any instant the position of this uh, cylinder is defined by that z uh, as a function of theta which is 0.02 cos of 2 theta and originally when the spring is unstretched so this point a is is at a distance of minus 0.02 from this origin so 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 when the spring is unstretched this cylinder will be located somewhere here and at that particular instant z is equal to minus 0.02 and the the stretch length will be defined by that z as a function of theta so now we can say that the spring force is we can say that the spring force is k and k is given which is 1000 newton per meter so i will write 1000 and delta x is xs minus x not so xs is 0.02 cos of 2 theta minus the the unstretched length which is minus 0.02 so i will write minus 0.02 so we can write this as 1000 this will become plus 0.02 so let me write it is plus 0.02 so now if i take 0.02 common 
So this is 0 0.02 and this is cos of 2 theta plus 1. So this is 1000 into 0 0.02 is 20. And let me rearrange this so I can add this is 1 plus cos of 2 theta. So this is the spring force at any arbitrary theta. So now we have determined the spring force as a function of theta. Now if, if we consider the free body diagram and if we consider the forces on the spring at any arbitrary theta, so that K will always apply the force at this particular point in this direction, so that will be Fz and the spring force will always be acting in this direction, in the, uh, in the negative z direction. So this is that spring force. So now if I apply the equation of motion, if I apply the summation of forces along the z axis is equals to the mass times Az, the acceleration. So the Fz is acting in the positive z direction minus that spring force and this is equal to the mass and the mass is 0.5 so I will write 0 0.5 and Az is z double dot and now I can replace this spring force by this equation so this is 20 into 1 plus cos of 2 theta now we have to find z double dot so z is given as a function of theta which is 0 0.02 cos of 2 theta now I have to take one another derivative with respect to time for this z, so this that will become z dot and if I take the derivative, so this will become 0 0.02 and the derivative of cos is minus sine of 2 theta and since theta is also as a function of time, so we have to apply the chain rule, so we have to apply, we have to take the derivative of the angle, so that will be 2 theta dot, the derivative of theta with respect to time is will become theta dot. So we can write this as, if I multiply this 2, this is minus 0 0.04 sine of 2 theta into theta dot. So let me write that theta dot here. So now if I take one another derivative with respect to time, so that will be z double dot. And now I have to apply the product rule. So I will write theta dot and the derivative of sine of theta, sine of 2 theta is cos of 2 theta. And then we have to take the derivative of the angle. So that will become 2 theta dot. And then I will write plus and then sine of 2 theta and then the derivative of theta dot so that will become theta double dot so now is in the problem statement it is said that the came is rotating with theta dot equals to 30 radian per second it is given this is rotating with 30 radian per second so this is and it is moving it is rotating with a constant rate of 30 radian per second. So this means that the acceleration in the angular direction is zero. If we take one another derivative of this, so that will become zero. So this means that this term will become zero. So now we will be left with z double dot equals to minus 0 0.04. And this will become 2 theta dot square cos of 2 theta. So now we know that 0 0.04 and theta dot is given which is 30. That will become 30 square cos of 2 theta. So minus 0 0.04 into 2 into 30 square. So let me find it. Minus 0 0.04 into 2 into 30 square. So this gives me minus 72. So minus 72 cos of 2 theta. So that is equal to z double dot, the acceleration in the z direction. So now I can write f of z. So now f z is equal to, we can add that this is 0 0.5 z double dot. So z double dot is minus 72 cos of 2 theta. And this term will become positive on the other side. So this will become plus 20 into 1 plus cos of 2 theta. So now further I can simplify this, this will be uh, 0 0.5 into minus 72, so minus 36 cos of 2 theta and this will become plus 20 plus 20 cos of 2 theta. 
we can write that this is 20 and minus 36 plus 20 is minus 16 cos of 2 theta. So fz as a function of theta is given by this equation. So now as we know that the maximum value of cos of 2 theta is plus 1 and the minimum value of cos of 2 theta is minus 1. Now, if we substitute cos of 2 theta equals to plus 1 in this equation, so then as we can see that that will give us the lesser fz value. And if we put cos of 2 theta minus 1 in this equation, so that will give us the maximum value since that will uh, cos of 2 theta equal to minus 1 will make this term positive. So if, if that terms if this term becomes positive, so then eight, that will add to this 20. So that will give us the maximum fz value. So this means that cos of 2 theta will give us the minimum value of z, uh, fz and cos of 2 theta equals to minus 1 will give us the maximum value of fz. So let me write that fz max is equal to 20 minus 16 and uh, I need to put cos of 2 theta minus 1. So that will become 20 plus 16. So that will be 36. So fz max is 36 Newton and similarly fz minimum will be equal to 20 minus 16 into plus 1. So when cos of 2 theta is plus 1 so that will give us the minimum value of fz. So fz minimum is equal to 20 minus 16 so that is 4 Newton. So this is the solution of this particular problem. So Fz is going to apply the maximum, the KM is going to apply the maximum force of 36 Newton and the minimum force equals to 4, 4 Newton. So I hope this will help you in your learning. If it helps in your learning, kindly subscribe my channel. Also like this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from Hibbler Dynamics.